Yeah. I just wanna see the light. Hey guys, Justice here with TomorrowsFilmmakers.com, the largest online film academy in the world, and I am here with our newest member, Seth, to talk about how to create travel videos. Now, Seth has been traveling across North America creating travel videos since he was 15 years old. And during that time, he's put together a lot of travel content and learned exactly how to create cinematic travel videos. So I've brought him on here to share his knowledge with you guys and guide you through the process of creating your own cinematic travel videos. That's right, my name is Seth, and I love traveling and creating videos. So putting the two together was a no-brainer for me. However, as fun as it is to travel to awesome locations and create beautiful content that is captivating and entertaining, it's not exactly easy. Many people think you just get out of your car and take a video of whatever is around you. But in reality, it takes a lot to put all of this together and make it into something that not only people will want to watch, but could also make you an income. We're excited to share these 10 steps with you, but if you would like to learn exactly how to make cinematic travel videos from start to finish, inside our full course at TomorrowsFilmmakers.com, we have an in-depth travel video course, which takes you through the entire process of creating cinematic travel videos. From the preparation, location scouting, shooting and editing, everything you need to know is right inside. With over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content on every single aspect of filmmaking taught by leading professionals in the film industry. Want to learn weddings? Why not learn from someone who makes six figures a year shooting just weddings? What about real estate? Learn from a full-time real estate videographer. Directing, acting, cinematography, music videos, short films, product videos, drones, composing, mobile filmmaking, learn the best from the best. With over 10,000 students in over 50 countries, a lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 online film course is only 97 bucks. If you wanna take advantage of this crazy deal, you can check out our website in the link below and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com to learn more. So with that being said, let's jump into these 10 steps that will guide you through how to make the best possible travel video that you can. We'll be going through this in chronological order, from before you even leave for the trip to when you're back home putting it all together. So let's begin with the first and most important step, determining the project tone. You've got your location picked out. You can't wait to get there. But before you start planning or doing anything else, you gotta figure out what the tone of your project is going to be. Let's say you're going to the mountains of Colorado during the winter time. Do you want an upbeat vlog style edit with all of your friends doing crazy activities or maybe a cinematic moody short film that's more slowed down and focused on storytelling? Once you figure this out, then you'll be able to plan out your video, determine where you go, what gear you'll need, what shots you want to capture, and so on. For example, I went to the Outer Banks back in the spring with four of my friends. I knew right away that with the group of friends I was bringing, this was going to be more of a fun, upbeat vlog style video. So I shot everything handheld and aimed for quick action shots, rather than a bunch of slow cinematic ones with a gimbal or stabilizer. The last thing you want to happen is, you go on your trip, capture a bunch of random clips, get back home, and then not know how the heck you're going to put it all together. I've done this on a few trips, and let me tell you, it's not fun. You're stuck staring at the editing timeline, wondering what to do with 317 clips that have no vision or purpose behind them. So make sure, before you do anything else, to determine what the tone of your project is going to be. Step number two is preparation. Now, even though you're excited to start filming, you need to plan out everything beforehand. Research a ton of locations on the internet, social media, or even just go on Google Maps and look around. Find spots that will fit the tone of your video. You can even contact a local to see if they know any great spots that other tourists might not know about. Then plan activities and things to do for those spots. Maybe look for a cool mountain overlook and then plan to hike up to it for sunrise. And once you have a bunch of locations jotted down, start mapping out the distance from everything and plan out what would work best for each day. People tend to forget that it takes time to get to these locations. So don't just plan for filming, plan for traveling. You definitely wanna have plenty to do, but also make sure that you have plenty of time to do them. Don't jam too much in one day to where everything feels rushed. I like making a rough itinerary that has the locations of where we're going for each day, but that's all. I don't make it too specific because you never know what's gonna happen while you're traveling. Always be open to going with the flow and capturing content that you weren't expecting to. Traveling and creating content is meant to be fun, so don't stress over making a minute by minute schedule for the entire trip. So just remember, write out exactly where you are going before you ever get there. 
Step number three is Google Maps. Google Maps will save your life. Instead of writing down a list of addresses to go to, make things super easy while you're traveling and have every location starred or saved in your maps. All you have to do is open up Google Maps, select a location you're going to, hit the save button and start. Here's for example, a recent trip I took to the mountains. Once we knew every location we were traveling to, I saved them all in Google Maps. And when it was time to go there, I just clicked on the star and we were off. This makes it simple and easy to see where we'll be going throughout the trip and map out distances and ETAs. This way, I also don't have to spend time typing in addresses or getting lost. I simply click on the star and I'm ready to go. This doesn't just apply to adventure spots either. I mean literally every single place you're driving to. Hotels, campsites, restaurants, literally everywhere. It also makes it easy to know roughly how many miles you'll be traveling total and help budget for gas. Step number four is budgeting. The least fun part of the trip will also ruin your trip if not considered. You need to sit down and plan out a budget before you go on any trip. You definitely don't want to wing it and end up spending way too much and then not having enough to enjoy the rest of the trip. Going on expensive, lavish vacations is definitely fun, but when I'm creating a travel video, I don't really consider myself on vacation. I mean, it's obviously a form of work, so I wanna make sure that I have prioritized things that are essential for my project and video. For example, I don't wanna spend a bunch of my budget on food and restaurants when those things aren't going to be a part of my travel video. I'd rather put my budget towards things like gas or maybe even having to pay to enter a certain location where we'll be filming. Figure out how much the trip is going to cost you before ever leaving, and this includes locations that require a fee. We usually hit up the grocery store as soon as we get to our travel destination and buy food for the whole trip. We try to avoid eating out as much as possible, and that tends to get expensive. We like to travel cheap, so I always use apps like Airbnb to find a reasonably priced and sometimes a really cool place to stay. I also use Turo, which is like Airbnb for rental cars. Budgeting for gas is also easy, like we said before in step three, if you mark every single location you're gonna be traveling to. This way you can just route to every location, total up the estimated amount of miles, and compare that number to how many miles per gallon your car gets. During all of this then allows you to see roughly how much you'll be spending on gas for your entire trip. So before you ever leave for your trip, budget everything. Step number five is packing. You've now got everything planned out and are almost ready to leave and begin shooting your travel video. There's only one thing left to do and that's to pack. However, unlike going on a vacation, you have to be very specific with what you pack for a travel shoot. It's crucial that everything goes as smoothly as possible so you're able to get all the content you need and enjoy the trip while you're at it. A big way to prevent any stress or disorganization while you're traveling is to pack minimal and only what you need. This applies to your camera gear as well as your clothes and other items. Like we mentioned in step one, once you find out what the tone of your video will be, this will then allow you to determine what camera gear you need to pack. It's okay if you have or need a good amount of gear to shoot your project, there's nothing wrong with that. Just be aware, the more gear you bring, the more you'll have to carry around and keep up with. Plus, the more stress it might put on you to figure out what selection of your gear you should use for each shot. Only bring the gear you absolutely need. If you're going to be only filming outside landscapes, don't pack a giant aperture light. This is why we do all the planning to not only make sure what we need to film, but also what gear we need to film it with. You don't want to be overwhelmed with the amount of gear you brought. Try and keep it simple. You're here to have fun and capture content not worry about which of your seven lenses you should use. The main point here is the less you pack, the easier it is to stay organized and the less you have to carry around. Step number six is gear. Now there's no right or wrong answer to what gear you should use for a travel shoot. It all depends on your project and what you plan to shoot while you're there. For most of my travel videos though, I don't usually take that much camera gear. I find it way easier, like we said in the previous step, to only pack what you need because travel can be hectic and fast paced and keeping up with tons of camera gear can get exhausting. So for my general travel shoot, I will usually only pack one handheld camera, one to two lenses, a drone, some ND filters, a tripod, and all the batteries and cards I need. That's pretty much it. Unless my project requires it, I don't usually take any kind of stabilizer or gimbal because that's just another pretty big piece of equipment that I may or may not even use. For a camera, I take my Sony a7C, which I absolutely love because it's great in low light easy to vlog with if I need to, and super portable so I can pack it and carry it around all day long. For lenses, my go-to is the Sigma Art 24-70 2.8, which pairs really well with my Sony, and it's much more affordable than the Sony version. 24-70 2.8 is probably the best focal length lens you can pack for a travel shoot, 
because you can get good wide and close shots, all while staying at 2.8 aperture the entire time to have nice bokeh in the background and decent low light capabilities. That's actually usually the only lens I pack because I never find myself needing anything else. If I were to pack another lens though, depending on the shoot, it would either be a 70 to 200 if I knew there were gonna be wildlife I could shoot, for example, or a prime lens if I was going to be shooting a lot at night and needed that super low aperture. For my drone, I use the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, which has amazing quality and is very portable. I also take ND filters for my camera and drone, and I recommend the Moment or Polar Pro ones. When it comes to a gimbal, I only use it if I'm shooting a cinematic video. If not, I go handheld and don't even pack it. But whatever camera gear you decide to bring, make sure that you know how to use it effectively and strive to only take the gear that you absolutely need. Again, you don't wanna be lugging around a bunch of extra camera gear when it doesn't help your project at all. Step number seven is to expect the unexpected. This is more of a heads up rather than a step of action. If you're an avid traveler, you know this to be true. If you're new to creating travel content though, just be aware that most of the time, not everything goes as planned. And this is just travel in general for you. Never go on a trip and expect everything to go as planned. Travel is unpredictable. Weather can change quickly, roads can close down, plans can be canceled, literally anything and everything can happen while creating a travel video. When me and my buddies went to Wyoming last year for a travel video, we had everything planned out and the trip was ready to run smoothly, but it ended up being anything but that. We are currently camped at a random spot near the Grand Tetons. Yeah, it's this is crazy. It's so cold. <laughs> so many things didn't go as planned and the trip was all over the place. That being said, it was probably one of the most entertaining trips we've been on. And I captured some of my best work during our time there. Even regarding your project plans, have a general idea of what you're shooting, but never be too strict on it. It's okay to have a very detailed and specific shot list, but always be able to adapt to changes and maybe even shoot something you weren't expecting to. Even when you're planning the trip itself, consider leaving room for just going with the flow or being spontaneous. I actually enjoy trips more when I do this. It's less stress on trying to check off some checklists and ensure we did everything we had planned. Just have fun with it. It makes for better memories and usually better content when you do things that weren't planned or expected to happen. Step number eight is being organized. After all the planning and packing, the time has finally come. You're away on your trip and starting to capture some epic travel content. And while you're traveling, things can get hectic and unorganized really quickly if you don't make it a priority to stay on top of it. This ties back to step five because like we said, how much you pack determines how hard it is to stay organized. Keep everything that you brought organized, but especially your camera gear. You don't wanna miss a shot because your camera battery dies and you can't find that extra battery hidden somewhere in your bag. Always know where things are and keep it that way. My low pro camera bag that I have is perfect for travel projects because it provides all the room I need for my camera gear, plus plenty of extra space for things like chargers, electronics, food, etc. I'll then have a duffel bag or small suitcase for my clothes, toiletries, and anything else that doesn't fit into my camera bag. Now organization also applies to all the footage you've captured. I transfer footage from my cards onto my portable hard drives at the end of every day and then sort everything into folders by day and or location. This way, when I go to edit everything, it's easy to find and use and makes post-production run way smoother. Don't wait to transfer files at the end of the trip and also don't just dump all of them into one folder where they're all disorganized. Upload all your footage at the end of every single day and I promise you, you will enjoy your trip way more. The ninth step is one that comes with creativity and trying new things and that is your shot variety. Unless some company hires you to get a bunch of landscape shots with the same scenery, same focal length, same lighting, etc. Make sure you have plenty of shot variety and don't be afraid to try something new. What keeps people's attention in travel films and what makes them better is if you shoot various different things in various different ways. This is something that I've definitely gotten better at each time I shoot a new travel video. I'm always trying to maximize the creativity of what shots I can get with the gear I have and try new kinds of shots or movements on each and every trip I go on. Various ways to do this is to shoot at different times of the day with different lighting and weather conditions. Go to a wide variety of sceneries and landscapes Use different lenses and focal lengths. Have subjects in your shots doing different activities. Use gimbal shots, handheld shots, drone shots, FPV drone shots, GoPro shots. Whatever fits into the tone and vision of your video, do it. Let's say I have a person walking through a field at sunset. I'm gonna try to get at least five different types of shots or angles of this one action. So I'll get a wide shot to show the location and then a close detailed shot of their face maybe then a medium shot of their feet or legs walking, then a following shot from behind, 
and lastly, a drone shot from above. I'll try and do this with every scenario or action to guarantee I have plenty to work with in post-production. This step tests your creativity and makes you strive to create something better and more unique each and every time. So ensure that you have shot variety and create the best possible film that you can. And finally, step number 10 is post-production. So now you've completed the trip and are finished with shooting your travel video. Now it's time to bring that project to life. And this is where all of the hard work of planning and shooting is paid off. Now, every time I get back from shooting a travel video, I realize that I have way more footage than I know what to do with. Even with feeling a bit overwhelmed at the amount that I've captured, I always remind myself that it's much better to capture too much than to not have enough. You can't use a clip that you don't have, but you can always delete a clip that you don't need. So with all this footage and an empty timeline of endless possibilities, you begin the post-production process. The very first thing I do before I even start editing is to organize everything I have. This is where step eight comes into play. If you organized your footage while we were filming, then it makes organizing it inside of your editing process much easier. Depending on how you're editing your video will determine how you organize your footage. I usually edit my travel videos in chronological order, so like I said before, I'll drop them into bins that are labeled by day and maybe locations during the day as well. Once you have your footage organized, go ahead and organize everything else you'll be using as well. The more you keep things organized in the editing process, the smoother and quicker it'll go. Once everything is organized and you have a clear vision of your video, it's pretty much smooth sailing from there. Now just be creative and have fun with it. Going through all of your footage and putting it together is such a great way to relive your trip and there's no better feeling than when it's completed and you can share those memories with everyone else. And for a little bonus tip, whether it be a shoot for a client or just a fun video for your YouTube, always, always, always make sure you're having fun. Creating a travel video is such an exciting thing to do. Exploring all over the world, seeing new things and experiencing new cultures. So don't stress throughout the entire trip and worry about things regarding your video or project. I've done this one too many times and it's not very enjoyable. Obviously, make sure you're getting the content you need, but don't let it control you. Follow these steps and do everything you can before you leave for your trip so you don't have to worry about it while you're traveling. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode and feel more confident when creating a cinematic travel video. Take these 10 steps and go film something, even if it's 20 minutes from your house. Pretend like a client asked you to film a video, give yourself one day to film it, plan out all the locations you'll need, and create the tone and feel of your video. Pack exactly what you need and go practice. This will make your next travel project so much easier because you've already practiced it. So if you'd like to learn more about creating cinematic travel videos, you can check out our full course at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content on every single filmmaking subject that you can imagine. If you'd like to join over 10,000 other filmmakers just like you pursuing their dreams to learn all about film, click the link in the description below and sign up for our full academy for 90% off. Many online film courses have travel video sections that by themselves cost over $100, but you can get our entire lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 online film course, which includes our travel video cinema course for only 97 bucks. So click the link in the description and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com and learn all the skills that you need to succeed. <laughs>